gut connection. And the skin is the largest organ in the body. It's weird to think of it as an organ, but it is. And like any other organ, it gets its own set of diseases. Some of the common diseases you may have heard about is eczema, acne, psoriasis, and rosacea. But what if these are not really issues on the skin? What if these issues are actually telling you something that's happening deeper in your body? You know, we treat these things with creams and lotions on the surface, but are they really telling us about something that's going on in the inside of the body? And that's what we're going to talk about today, the gut-skin connection. But before I begin, you know, it was, I always like to let you know how to reach me and my team. So if you're watching us on Facebook, if you're watching us right now, drop the word live so we can know that you're here and there's always a chat going. And if you're watching us a few days later on replay, let us know that you're here. Just drop the word replay. Let us know that you're, you know, watching and comment. We always read it. Um, if you type the word change at any point, then we will know that you want the show notes and then my team will send it over to you. If you're watching us on YouTube, hello like and subscribe because we want to know that you're here and that you're enjoying the content. And for those of you listening on the podcast, you don't get to see my amazing hair, but the content is the same anyway. And of course, for all of you, please follow us on Instagram at The New Method. And um, if you like this and it speaks to you, always share this on any platform with anyone you think this will help and let people become the game changers in their life. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Efrat Lamandre, and everyone calls me E, and I invented the new method where we empower people to realize that their symptoms are not in their head. Also, I wrote a book called It's Not In Your Head. Look it up on Amazon. It's pretty awesome. So no matter where you are, join the conversation. Let us know that you're listening. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. Let us know what you want to hear. Um, let's see where this goes. So today, as I said, we're going to talk about the skin and gut connection. Now, the skin and the gut have a lot in common. And this is important because to understand why they work together. So let's break it down a little bit. First of all, they both interact with the outside world, right? So let's talk about the skin. The skin, the sweat glands, the sebaceous glands, if you were to stretch it out, it provides a total surface of about 85 feet, which is about roughly the distance between two baseball bases. I was told by my wife to tell you that I know it's not 85 feet, but it's about the distance between two bases. I don't want any baseball you know, fans to tell me that I have it wrong. I got it. It's an average. It's like an about. Um, so, and it's the first line barrier from the outside world in, right? It protects us when we touch things. It protects us. It doesn't go into our body. It protects us. The GI tract also has one of the largest interfaces at about 90 feet. Again, the distance between two baseball bases. And it also interacts between us and the outside world. About 60 tons of food go through our system in a lifetime. That's 60 tons of external world going inside our body, being managed by the GI tract, okay? So that's a lot of conversation between inside and outside that the GI and the skin have to deal with. So that the interaction with this external environment lets us know what's harmful, what's beneficial. Both the skin and the GI provide us protection. The skin doesn't allow certain things in and the gut doesn't allow certain things in. And they also have certain enzymes on the skin and in the gut that kills off pathogens if we don't want them there. Another thing that the skin and the gut share is that they're full of microbes. Microbes, uh, bacteria, viruses, uh, yeast, a whole bunch of living things live on top of our skin and in our gut. And they have their own microbiomes, the world of microbes. So you have a whole microbiome living in here and you have a whole microbiome living inside of you. It's kind of bananas, but it's true. And these bacteria, they have super important jobs. They shape our immune system. They protect us against pathogens. They break down metabolites and they maintain a healthy barrier. So this world, this microbiome, I, you know if you've watched any of my other lives or have listened to any of my podcasts, you know that we talk about the microbiome a lot. We talk a lot about the gut microbiome, but the skin microbiome is also there, super important, and protects us and is an integral part of how we survive. So more and more research is showing that skin issues are actually 
and a sign of the balance of this microbiome that's going on inside. So today we're gonna to talk about acne, eczema, psoriasis, and rosacea, and you'll see that the most cutting edge treatments are no longer just about creams and lotions. It's no longer about treating the outside. It's about treating the inside. I always tell my patients that your skin is the neon sign of what's going on in your belly. So let's dive into that. Acne. So for a lot of people, uh, acne is associated with bacteria, which is why they give us antibiotic cream. Sometimes we get oral antibiotics. There's this conversation that bacteria causes it. And over the past few years, we've seen such an increase of people with acne. And there's it's 80% prevalent in this country for people to have acne. So it can't be just genetics, right? How did it suddenly become that more and more people have acne? It can't possibly just be family history. So we've come to realize that what's happening inside is affecting the outside, affecting the acne. They did studies of people's microbiomes, right? The, the bugs that live inside them. And they compared the microbiomes of people who have acne versus the people who don't have acne. And they discovered that the people with acne have a very specific type of microbiome. I don't wanna bore you with names, but they have an overgrowth of some bacteria and not enough of the good bacteria. And they see it time and again that people with acne have a very specific kind of microbiome. And studies have shown that there's links between a high fat, high sugar diet that's correlated to acne. So the latest about fixing acne is not about putting a cream on or getting a special wipe. It's about cleaning up the diet and using a good probiotic to fix the microbiome. And it's showing amazing results. Let's move on to eczema. Eczema is an inflammatory process. Acne was more bacterial, eczema is inflammatory. And again, it's usually treated with moisturizers, topical steroids, immunosuppressants, all to calm down the inflammation. Anything that creates inflammation, we want to calm down the inflammation for eczema. Again, they did a study and compared the microbiome of patients with eczema. And they found that they had a very specific pattern also of certain good to bad bacteria. So the microbiome was really affecting their skin. And we know for sure that diet is affected by eczema. Alcohol exacerbates it. Dairy can exacerbate it. Studies have been shown that diets with low fruits and vegetables and low omega-3 worsen eczema. And conversely, getting rid of the alcohol, getting rid of the dairy, and increasing the omega-3s has been associated with reduced flare-ups for eczema. So again, we're looking at no longer just treating the flare-up with a cream, but also looking at calming down the inflammation inside the belly with the right diet and making sure the microbiome is intact to reduce the eczema flare-ups. So psoriasis is a little bit more complicated because it's not just inflammatory, it's actually what we call an immune-mediated inflammatory response. And it's not just skin. I mean, we see it on the skin, but it's such a complex disease that we actually consider it a systemic disease. And that's why where acne uses antibiotics, eczema uses anti-inflammatories, psoriasis is often, often uses biologics, like a version of antibodies to try to calm down this immune mediated response that psoriasis is. But again, it's not limited to the skin. So people who have psoriasis are often will get um, other gut issues. They'll get inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, celiac, and lactose intolerance. So right there, we see that this whole system, the gut and the skin is connected for people with psoriasis. Smoking and alcohol exacerbates psoriasis. Obesity is linked to worsening outcomes in psoriasis. And conversely, weight loss is linked to improvement in psoriasis. So studies are showing that if they take groups of people with psoriasis and they put them on a good quality probiotic along with the right diet, they have fewer and fewer flare-ups. Once again, showing that the microbiome is playing a huge role in the skin issue. And lastly, we're gonna move on to rosacea, which is a chronic inflammatory process. It's a little bit different than the other ones. And rosacea exacerbations for years have been known to be linked to certain foods. You could be categorized to heat related, meaning hot beverages can cause it, alcohol related can, ca can cause it, capsaicin related, meaning certain peppers can cause it, and cinnamaldehyde, say that fast, for, say that fast, is also found in tomatoes, citrus, cinnamon, and chocolate, also shown to exacerbate rosacea. So we already know that there's a diet rosacea link. But what we've discovered also 
is that certain bacteria like H. pylori has been associated with an increase of rosacea and the prevalence of anyone who has um, SIBO, small intestinal bowel overgrowth, also has the capacity to worsen rosacea. So again, rosacea is not just about the skin. It's not just putting on the topical. It's about fixing the belly. So once again, it's clear that we have to fix the microbiome. So what do we do? A strong microbiome means there's enough good bacteria. There's not too much bad bacteria. There's some good anti-inflammatories in there, such as something called short chain fatty acids. I want you to look that up when you have a chance. SCFA, short chain fatty acids. We need a stomach that has that because short chain fatty acids reduce inflammation and actually kill certain bacteria that we don't want around. So we want the microbiome to also be calm because it affects the immune system. And if it's in good shape, and the allergies are better, the inflammation is better, the autoimmune is better, and all of that means that the skin is better. So how do we keep the microbiome health in check? And I've done plenty of lives on this, so I'm just gonna give you some biggies to avoid. You know, the standard American diet, it really influences skin. A typical Western diet, which is, consists of processed foods, a lot of sugar, dairy, is known to aggravate acne and other skin issues by raising levels of insulin-like growth factors, IGF-1, as well as insulin. All of this creates inflammation, which shows up on our skin. So remove the dairy, consider removing the dairy. And dairy intolerance is not just about lactose, and it's not just about belly issues. There are other proteins in dairy that can also create inflammation, especially if you have leaky gut. This will mean that your immune system is going to respond to the dairy by causing inflammation, which can show up in your skin. And there's so many studies that show that link between dairy and acne and eczema. Now, there are some benefits to dairy. I know there's a whole world of people going, don't take my dairy away. There are some benefits to dairy for sure. And you may not be one of those people who are sensitive, but you have nothing to lose. If you're suffering from psoriasis, eczema, acne, you have nothing to lose by removing the dairy from your life for a few months and see what your skin feels like. There's no downside to it. Sugar, avoid the sugar. Sugar is inflammatory for everyone, for everyone. There's no one that, is, you know, it's not inflammatory. It exacerbates inflammatory skin issues, especially if you eat lots of sugar. It raises insulin levels. It causes fatty liver. I did a live on that, which creates more inflammation and actually creates more cytokines. Those are substances that cause inflammation. So they create inflammation all over the body. It increases the production of fat cells called adipose cells, which again, increases inflammation. And all of this causes a flare up in psoriasis, rosacea, eczema, and acne. And with acne, not only is it an inflammatory process, all these sugar levels, but it causes your body to create something called sebum, which is like an oil, which clogs the pores, which is another factor in breakouts. So nutrition and acne are very connected. And if all of that doesn't convince you about sugar, premature aging, okay? One of sugar's most damaging effects is that it makes your skin look prematurely aged. Sugar breaks down collagen and elastin, and the protein that, which is the protein that gives your skin shape. So if you're eating a lot of sugar, you're gonna start looking wrinkled and saggy and dry. So if you're not convinced about the acne and the psoriasis and the eczema, do it for pure vanity. Nothing wrong with that. Certain medications can also really mess up the microbiome. Antibiotics, NSAIDs like Advil and aspirin, um, anti-acids like Nexium and Prilosec, all of them affect the gut. And I'm not telling you not to take them. If they were prescribed, take them. But just make sure you really, really need them because they are definitely affecting your belly, which can affect your skin. Drinking water is kind of an easy one. Um, people always ask me how much water. So average, 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 13 cups of water for men, nine cups of water for women. But of course, it depends on how much you sweat during the day, what you do for work, and how much dehydrating... Um, beverages you consume, such as coffee. So that's a, it's just like a rough average because water, what does it do? It helps remove the toxins and bacteria from the skin. It keeps the skin moisturized, allows the skin to maintain like a healthy skin level, of, uh, cell level rejuvenation. And um, it also helps reduce your blood sugar levels. And of course, it helps reduce wrinkles because if you're well hydrated, you're less likely to have wrinkles. So I always try to appeal for vanity at all, you know, if all else fails. So water keeps your body hydrated and refreshed and helps maintain your skin's elasticity and glow. And every live, of course, in addition to nutrition, I always like to give you the supplements 
that are very helpful for the particular issue. So let's talk about those. Vitamin E, it's a fat soluble vitamin, but it's an antioxidant that stops the production of free radicals. And if you don't know what free radicals are, I did a whole thing on it on TikTok. You should already be following me on TikTok and I explain what free radicals are. And it really, really helps. It is involved in immune function and um, it, which we know now affects the skin. Being out in the sun depletes us from vitamin E. So we wanna make sure to get as much vitamin E as we can from diet. We'll find it in sunflower seeds and some nuts, but it's also helpful to supplement. Vitamin C, this vitamin, of course, you kind of know is the citrus fruits, and it does a lot more than just help you with the colds. It promotes collagen production, which is uh, for your skin, which also, and also acts as a, uh, a cofactor, which means like an assistant that is di directly related to skin health and function. And because we lose a lot of vitamin C in our urine, we have to constantly replace it. Of course, it's always best to replace through diet, which includes red peppers, kale, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, tomatoes, and of course, oranges. But you're also welcome to supplement. Vitamin D, you know vitamin D. If you work with me, everyone gets vitamin D, which is actually a hormone, not a vitamin. It's produced in the skin with exposure to the sun. Um, vitamin D does so much, so much. It has actually receptors kind of like everywhere in the body just to help, just to absorb vitamin D because it's so important. But in this particular case, what we're looking for is that it reduces inflammation, which we all know is good for the skin. Um, and there's another crit critical fact, vitamin D also helps a lot of regulation of gut bacteria, which we know at this point is critical for our skin. Calcium, super important. Yes, we know how good it is for our teeth, and our bones, but it's actually really good for our skin. It regulates the skin's functions and it's found on the outermost layer. So if there's not enough, your skin can start looking fragile, thin, and dry. So make sure you get enough calcium. Um, and a lack of calcium in the skin overall prevents the production of new skin growth and shedding of dead skin cells. So we wanna get in there. And of course, collagen supplement, I don't know if any of you have seen it, but I try to put collagen in my coffee every morning because it's the body's most abundant protein. It's what makes your skin and your muscles elastic and, and pliable. And it's responsible for repairing cells after damage. So ingesting collagen daily helps with that renewal process. Okay, woo, I talked a lot. So let's recap. And if you don't already know, go on your iPhone, type in the word recap, and my face will show up. And anyone on every, any platform should do this like right away, like while I'm talking. Type in the word recap in there in your GIFs or GIFs, however you want to pronounce it. And my face will show up and it's pretty cool. But let's recap. So skin issues like acne, eczema, psoriasis, and rosacea are linked to bacteria, inflammation, and immunity. So they're not just skin issues. They are belly issues. It's become clear that the gut microbiome has a huge part to play in skin issues. Ensuring that the gut microbiome on, is on point is crucial in healing the skin. Not eating the standard American diet, avoiding dairy, avoiding sugar, avoiding certain medications if you don't need it, and increasing water is going to be a vital part of healing your skin. And of course, if this is a lot and there's just you know a lot to discuss and it gets confusing out there, you can always work with us. The best way to reach us is at the new method or the new method.com send us a message on any platform, we will respond because we are here to help you become the game changer in your life because you always knew there was a better way. I will see you guys next week. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I really put my heart and soul into each one of these videos. Don't forget to subscribe and like. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out my video on Alzheimer's. I'll see you soon.